All right. I am very excited for everyone to meet you, Aaron. I'm excited <laughs> Fellow Aaron. too. I'm excited to be here. Different spelling and different skill set. Yes. <laughs> but both Aaron's. Um, so anyone that's been listening to my podcast over the last several weeks, especially, has been listening to me talk about topics like job loss, anxiety, mm. um, survivor's guilt for people that are still in a role and saw a bunch of their pe people leave, get you know replaced, things like that people that have been laid off and how they might be struggling with getting placement if it was uh, very abrupt. Or perhaps there are some people that are like, hey, the writing is kind of on the wall. Um, I, I want to position myself as well as I can for if there is another round of layoffs or reduction in forces or however pretty way that people want to say it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm so excited to introduce everyone to you today, Aaron, because if anyone is already following you on LinkedIn, it's like every time I see your post, like I'm double clicking into that and I'm reading the entire thing, which I do not do for a lot of LinkedIn posts. I, I like to scroll through and I like to see like a headline or something, little tidbit, get to grab my attention, but yours are always so well thought out and there's such good information in them. And this is because of the fact that you are an expert in this area and it's a perfect time for people to know who you are and what you do. And so for everyone that's listening right now, you're very lucky to be able to listen today because we have Erin Lubar and she is a resume job search and interview coach for career changers. This could not be the more perfect timing for someone with her skill set that she's built up over years. I'm, I'm going to let her introduce herself and kind of fill out exactly what she does and why she's so good at this. But I want you to know that she's seen a lot of resumes. She's seen a lot of job seekers. She's been one. She's trained them. She has so much knowledge to share with us today. So Aaron, can you tell everybody else a little bit about? Yeah. Yeah. What you did a pretty darn good job that. actually, Aaron. But yeah. So <laughs> like you said, I am a resume job search and interview coach for career changers. Um, I certainly work with folks who are not career changers, but I have a little bit of a sweet spot for a career changer because I'm a two-time career changer myself. So um, I, I guess just to give a little bit of detail about maybe my background, is that a good place to, to start? Yes, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I grew up in the grocery industry, uh, believe it or not, the meat business, actually, to be specific, and grew up in a family business, had kind of the family business story of like, I was going to grow up, sweat equity, I was going to inherit it someday. So like, I had my plan. And I think that's one of the first things that I would say about a lot of people who've maybe been impacted lately is like you had a plan and then life came in and just like didn't respect that. Right. So for me, um, I won't go into the details, but like you've heard about family businesses and how dramatic they can be. And mine was. And, yeah. um, so I found myself in this place where all of a sudden I needed to think about me in something other than what I thought I'd do for the rest of my life. And, um, that was back like 2011, and the internet didn't have nice resources like LinkedIn really to the degree it is today. There weren't people posting yeah. job advice. There weren't coaches. There weren't like resume templates all over the place. So here I was with this skill set, which I knew I was really good at a lot of things because I had run a $30 million grocery operation. I managed hundreds of employees. Okay. Um, so this wasn't, this wasn't a ma and pop, like you, you were kind of I mean, doing the under, the under humble brag there. You're like, it, oh, it was, it was a family business. It's this a, family was a business. large family business. Yeah. And it's, a, it was a yeah. single store, but it was like a gourmet grocery store. And I mean, we sold oh, wow. everything, meat and beer yeah. and wine and produce and deli. And we had a huge greenhouse and it's really like a cool place, but, um, you know, so I like I knew I could do things, right? Because I got to be very creative in that role. That was very entrepreneurial. But then I there I sat with like this pile of things that I knew I could do, but I was like, well, how do I pitch this to somebody and what do I do? Um, mm. so I actually my first leap was I went and I was recruited by Trader Joe's into a corporate role there because it was kind of like what I knew. So, Makes sense. And yeah. they're, the, they're the like, you know, kind of the corporate version of what you just right. described. And so yeah. like for me, like that identity, and I think I recognize that in a lot of the career changes is like you have this identity that you're still like not sure how to take you apart from that and still be like, wow, this version of me that's not this identity is still really cool. Um, I only knew how to sell me under that lens. So 
Mm -hmm. Um, I worked for them for a very brief period of time. And then I was just like, look, I can't keep doing this anymore. Like, this is just maybe too heavy, too much, like too much baggage. Um, and so I actually reached out to a connection, not like a LinkedIn connection, but just like a regular old real life connection from my grocery days and said, Hey, you're always catering and doing big parties and stuff. And I have no idea what I need to do next, but like, if you're ever hiring somebody, I just need a different job. And that was like mm. my sales pitch of me of just like, hey, I just need to do something else if you know anything. Hey, uh, so if you're bored, like. Yeah, uh... <laughs> like if a job shows up, maybe you could think of me. So, um, you know, what I didn't know. Um, but honestly, she did think of me. So it must have worked. And I landed in a. You did the undersell. The very. Yeah, the very I, I think it was just like I probably helped her with a lot of crab legs over the years. And I was like really <laughs> good at helping her cater her parties. And she, she was like, this girl would yeah. be really good in staffing. So I uh, moved into the staffing industry. And um, I'm going to be honest with you, like I had never worn dress pants to work. I had never <laughs> sent an Outlook calendar invite. That is invite. a braggable comment. <laughs> <laughs> like I wore jeans and like a vest every day, like a North Face vest. So uh -huh. this was like fish out of water for me. And I think that's the same thing again. Like that's the whole career changer thing is you feel like a fish out of water when you're trying to change what you do and mm -hmm. you feel like an imposter and you feel like everybody can see that. And, and you feel like it's just you, which is so funny to me that we all right. isolated think it's just us. Right. And now when everyone I mean, goes through this roller coaster of emotions. Yeah. All this stuff that I do on LinkedIn. I mean, now I see all these people telling me like, oh, I feel this way. I feel this way. I feel, and I'm like, my goodness, this is everybody. This wasn't me. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I'm just part of a really big club of people that all feel this way, but um, it felt real at the time. And that's as good as real. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I worked in recruiting for a while. And um, I guess the one thing that I will say that I learned growing up in a family business was I learned how to work hard. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I think that that drive really helped. And I ended up, I had a six year career in recruiting. I was, when I left, I was the director of a healthcare recruiting team. So I led a team of recruiters and a team of salespeople. And, um, I'll tell you, that was such a good crash course in what actually happens in hiring because mm. all I did all day was talk to hiring managers. And See, that's all the stuff that we, on if you're on the outside and you've only really been ever interviewing for that, yeah. what can be thought of as a black box, like maybe submit your resume online and then if something goes well, you get to like actually get on a call with someone or now a Zoom, yeah. like all you've seen all the, how the sausage is made on the back end of all yeah, of that. Yeah, I've used an applicant so tracking system. so anyone that's and looking right now. Yeah, yeah. that's the, the big one, right? The applicant tracking system. And yeah. like when you use one, you're like, what's all the fuss about? This is like a database that doesn't work as well as it promises that it will. <laughs> it's like Shh, any software, right? Where they promise the you're like, it's going to solve all your life's problems. The and then you get it and you're like, this isn't that good. Um, so yeah. So <laughs> anyhow, um, I worked in recruiting for a while. I guess uh, the, the mom story in me is I have two kids and, you know, I went through a really rough period of that career change during a time where I also had two kids and mm -hmm. I firsthand experienced working for companies that didn't offer any sort of maternity leave. And so, um, I will say it lit kind of an angry fire in me, if I'm going to be honest, like yeah. I, I had my second child and I was like, I am done working for these types of companies where I'm stealing and borrowing PTO to take time off to have a kid. Or it's so ridiculous. I left on maternity leave and had tens of thousands of dollars of commission refused to me because I wasn't there when, um, you know, when the commission was paid out. So I, I set my sights on moving to Amazon at that point. And I was like, I'm going to go mm. work for a real company, you know, like a big company mm. that people think is a big deal. And um, I would say that's really where I developed a lot of the methodology that I use in my practice today with job seekers is... I went to McDonald's every morning, bought myself a dollar iced tea and sat and worked before work every morning. And I was like, I'm going to figure out this job seeking thing. I know enough from recruiting now to know how this works. And I actually networked. I found a guy on LinkedIn who lived in Detroit, who worked for Amazon. And I was like, hey, will you have coffee with me? Um, and he said, yeah. He said he'd have a chat with me. And that turned into a referral. And the rest is history as far as my you know, professional career goes. But mm. um, 
the whole helping job seekers thing happened really organically. Like it was just a hobby at first for me because it Well, it seems personal. like it's from everything you've shared with us so far, it's baked into your DNA at this point. Y yeah. I, you know, I remember sitting there and thinking to myself, if I ever figure this out someday, I'm going to help somebody so they don't have to go through this. And mm -hmm. cause I, I mean, that is a real experience that I lived through and I know I just rattled it off in a few you know, minutes here, but like that felt like a gauntlet in life. Yeah. And, um, and I know that Especially that's for parents returning tough. to the workforce and, you know, we could have a whole other episode on how ridiculous it is and how yeah. we think it's just normal that, that what you just talked about, about having to like beg, borrow and steal PTO from other people and them having like corporations feeling like they're doing a really nice thing by allowing you to donate your PTO to someone that needs <laughs> it. It's like, Ugh. actually other places in the world, this is completely immoral. Yeah. Like you're required yeah. to give maternity and paternity leave. Yeah. In other countries, they actually give you skis, you know, <laughs> in, in the Nordics. They're Do like, they take really? time off and get they to know your you family ski? and then come Where's back. Your job will be here. And we as Americans just, it's all we've ever known yeah. is scarcity as far as that's concerned. Yeah. Like I said, it could be a whole different episode. It, it could. But... And we could spend a lot of time talking about it. A lot of thoughts <laughs> on that, but we'll skip that for now. Um, how, so let's, let's jump in with the, some of the things that I've been seeing you post as well lately and, and on a broad number of topics, but what I love about it, and if you aren't already following Erin on LinkedIn, you need to be because when she posts things, they are instantly actionable. Like she'll say like, Hey, here's what I'm seeing with resumes. And these are things that you should know that are, you know, will keep you out of trouble or big red flags, or will save you a ton of time. Like they're great hacks in there as well. Super, super actionable. Um, I'd love to talk a little bit about, um, cause, cause you talk about when you're coaching people as well, mm -hmm. right? Uh, how to, how to sell yourself and how to package yourself. Could you yeah. talk a little bit uh, more to that? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, number one thing, so I've, I've had a sales career my whole life. And so I had this moment where I realized this is just a sale, right? A job search is just a sale. You are the product and you are oh, positioning that. it to your target market, which is a hiring manager for job ABC, yeah. whatever you're going after. And so, um, you know, one of the things that I am, I feel very strongly about, especially for career changers is picking a focus role because you have to know what you're selling toward. And I always say it's like a visual where if you, you know, if you have energy in a ball and you can direct all that energy toward one thing, you're going to make a much stronger impact. Versus if you have that energy and you kind of go Pah, like that and blast it in a million different directions, it's exciting. It looks like a firework, but <laughs> you're kind of like running out of energy much faster and you're not really ending up in any particular direction. And so, oh, okay. you know, when you're selling yourself, the first thing is to figure out what am I trying to sell? Because everything that you have inside of you is valuable and I think that that's a big one for career changers. There's nothing that's not valuable. It's all great experience. But there are some things or ways that you might talk about those things that will change based on what you're trying to do next. And so that whole idea of figuring out what you're trying to sell toward and how you're going to position yourself, that's an area where I feel like I'm, I'm particularly good. I'm good at thinking of like, what's the new story of you as it relates to this future job and what are we going to kind of steal from the past and maybe repackage or just speak about a little differently with some different terms to help your future mm. audience understand that. And I bet that's so useful too, to have an outside point of view like yours, because we can get so wrapped up kind of forced through the tree situation where we don't, where we, we like, I have all these different experiences. I'm not sure which ones to kind of push to the front or reorder or say in a slightly different way that, if you're working with a coach like you, you can kind of have that outside view yeah. from your work experience as well as just like an outside viewpoint that's object more objective than we can get when we get wrapped up in our brains. Yeah. And I've, I've done so much of it. I always say I'm good. If I talk to somebody for an hour, I can generally tell them what they'll be good at. And I can narrow it down <laughs> to a few it. things. And I'll be like, this is the direction I think wow. you should go. Now, obviously it's up to them, right? Like they, yeah. I don't have to wake up and do whatever they decide every day, but but generally speaking, like, you know, when you talk with somebody, you can get an idea of like, are you a behind the scenes person or are you going to want to be out in front of the customer? And, you know, mm -hmm. what kind of gets you excited and are you a process person or are you a big idea person? And so just these like really big kind of like this or that 
decisions can really, it's like one of those choose your own adventure books, right? Like you kind of make a couple decisions and you end up on a path. And once you have yeah. that path, um, then you can start doing all the next things like the resume and the LinkedIn and the, you know, everything that follows. But until you figure out what you're selling toward, it's really difficult to make a compelling story because you don't know the story you need to tell. And so many of us jump on, I know I've done this in the past as well, especially when I was younger, is I, I just jump on immediately and start looking for roles that are similar enough to the one I'm currently in. Yeah. Because I just think like that must be the only thing I'm qualified mm -hmm. for at the moment is my last role or the one I was just in. And mm -hmm. so that should, that must be so valuable for people to kind of take a moment, ga gather, talk with someone like you, gather, maybe get some different viewpoints of how a different lens they could look at their experience through ask them some questions about, is this, do you want to keep doing what you're doing? Or do you want, do you see yourself doing something else? And you just haven't kind of allowed yeah. anyone to know about that yet because you've been afraid, right? Yeah. I think, you know, and, and, you know, obviously people can work with me on that. Or even if you want to talk with someone in your life, asking someone else mm. for how they see you, it, maybe you're not going to make that 100% of your decision, but getting those alternate perspectives is such a helpful thing. I mean, that's why there's focus groups for products. Yeah. It's because we want to see what people think about the product and then put that all together and come up with what's the strategy now. And so mm -hmm. you can create your own little mini focus groups just by asking people in your life, Hey, you know, how would you describe me? Or, you know, what are some reasons that you would say people like working with me or just those different types of questions that can help maybe pull up some things that, you overlook about yourself that um, other people really value, you know? Mm -hmm. Once once someone has kind of maybe done that work first, instead of just jumping on LinkedIn and just like applying for everything under the sun, what, what are you seeing right now with the dreaded process of the update of the resume? Like, what should we be using is I've heard, I've heard some people even say like, I don't know if you really even need to have a resume unless you're yeah. uploading it. And they usually don't even look at it. They just go to your LinkedIn profile anyway. Like, what are you seeing right now? Obviously yeah. in the industries that you work in is very specific in technology a lot, but just in general, do you, th are, is there anything that you could mentor people, any tips or tricks you have there or things that you're seeing? Oh yeah. I got all kinds of stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, how much time do you have? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's grab a seat. Um, no, I, you know, well, first things first. So I offer a free resume template on my website and oh, I think go. that that's a really important call out because the number one thing that people get hung up on is like, I need a template. So they go to Canva mm. or they pay someone on Etsy for like something that looks really fancy. There are no, unless you're maybe going for some sort of design job. There are literally no jobs out there where there are points for a pretty resume. Quite frankly, a lot of times I would say the pretty resume, it's like stuff ends up not where those of us that read resumes would expect to see it. And so it's actually oh. harder to read and it's more frustrating or like colors can sometimes be difficult for some individuals to read through. And yeah. so you really got to think about just black and white text, plain document, um, I build in Word and then save as PDFs, but I have a free resume template on my website. And I think that too many people obsess about the template. Like that's going to somehow as far as get the, the prettiness job. of the template. Yeah. And just like that, there's a right template and it's really about the content at the end of the day. The content is what you're, it's what you're saying, not what you're just putting it on as far as layout. And I, you know, the, and I wouldn't have thought of that, but obviously you want to design when you're telling a story or when you're doing a job search, you want to do it towards the audience. Yeah. It's going to be, and, and something you just pointed out that I hadn't really thought about before is there's someone like you from the past when you were in staffing or, or in, that's reading through so many resumes a day, the easier we make their job Mm -hmm. And put things, like you said, in places that make sense to them because they're having to go through so many and coordinate clients with applicants and all this back and forth, that that is actually going to help you way more than a pretty resume, a pretty template. is a template that's, that's made in the way that someone will find easy to extract the information they need, which yeah. I wouldn't have thought about. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Fantastic. Like everything in its place actually has a value because- like I said, when you, when you do this for a job, you tend to start to look for things in the place where you expect it. And so when things get 
like people use bar charts to try to express like their um, capabilities, maybe with certain tools. And it's like a three quarters full bar chart. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Right. Like, and so it's, you've created more questions than you've helped me. I'm 72% proficient in Microsoft Word. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. What that like means. I don't know. I don't know how to <laughs> interpret that. So, um, so that's the first thing about it. But then, you know, the next thing about it is really, like I said, the content and the whole idea with the content is again, knowing the audience you're speaking to, what are those three to five big rocks or themes that connect back to the job you're trying to get? that somebody's going to want to hear about. If you are in the market for a new pair of shoes and I can tell you 17 great facts about cars and why you should buy a car, they're probably all true facts and they're all probably pretty good, but they're not about shoes, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to buy shoes. So that's, I, I would say like what we run into a lot, what I see a lot on resumes is we have people kind of talking about things that don't connect back to the job they're trying to get. They talk more about the stuff in the past. And then mm -hmm. um, the other piece I would say is that we tend to see a lot of, I tend to see a lot of um, jobs that just list tasks. So I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. And, you know, that's fine, but that's only part of the story. The other part of the story was, were you good at it? Did you get a result? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, everybody buys results right? Yeah. So I think that like, if I wanted somebody to take one thing away, I'd say people buy results. Are you selling results in your resume? Now to your point about like our resume is dead. I say no. And it might okay. be my whole, um, you know, coming up in a writing culture at Amazon, but, um, Writing is an incredibly valuable exercise because it allows you to look with a critical eye. It allows you to revise and reread. So even if you're going to make a LinkedIn profile, my yeah, but to everybody is like, yeah, but what are you going to put in the LinkedIn profile if you mm -hmm. haven't figured that out? It's just a digital resume. So I'm a big proponent of figure out what you want to say in your resume, do the work there and do really good work one time then just lift and shift that over to your LinkedIn. And it's like easy peasy, okay. 30 minutes and done. Do it that way. Yeah. And so, uh, and obviously I'm going to ask for that link. We'll put it in the show notes, everyone. Yeah. And everyone that's like, Aaron, where's the template? Go to <laughs> Aaron the show Jacobs. notes, of course. <laughs> yeah, we will find that. I guarantee you, everyone, it will be in the show notes that you can click on it. Um, what, what would you say as far as, are there any anything specifically that you are seeing in resumes right now that people listening might not know is something they don't need to put in or is a bad idea to put in like any gotchas or anything that we should know about right now that you're seeing and you're like, people, please stop doing this. Yeah. So a uh, quick story about when I worked in recruiting, I worked in staffing. And so what that is, is that's like we, we placed, um, project based it talent and it was really mm -hmm. common for, individuals to put in their resume a whole bunch of keywords. So it would look like they had all these skills and they would use a skills section. Mm -hmm. So a lot okay. of times you'll see it on a resume towards the top. Somebody will have kind of this bank of a whole bunch of different words. Maybe it's oh different gosh, tools totally or that. maybe it's things like teamwork. <laughs> um, <laughs> please don't put teamwork in your resume. Um, that is resume right now. not valuable. <laughs> it is a not good return on investment of your space and someone's eye time for teamwork. But um, that whole skill section is really a bit of a letdown. And I have a lot of trusted mm -hmm. recruiter friends who are still in the business. And we talk about this every so often because I like to do that. I like to say, am I right or am I just telling people what I think? And this yeah. is something where when I talk to people who are in the business, this is still very much true that that bank of skills, you can maybe get away with it if you're talking about really specific tools or technologies or coding languages. But if mm -hmm. you've got softer skills like collaboration or time management or data analysis, whatever that means, right? Like all the things you can analyze. Um, <laughs> it's it's too big for somebody to pick that up and do anything with it. Okay. It seems like filler. It, it is. Space. And it's just really hard. Even if you list those tools and technologies, going back to that story of recruiting, uh, people used to put lies in there. That was the number one place people would lie. 
because you could just shove a bunch of keywords in there. It wasn't hard Mm -hmm. to work it into a contextual sentence, like a bullet point. Uh I'd just say, oh, I have all these technologies and then maybe somebody will call me. And so Uh anyone who's worked in this business knows that that area is where people just stuff keywords. And there's generally if, so here's what I do. I'm just going to tell everybody what I do. Okay. So (laughs) I pull up your resume. I do control F. And then I type in whatever it is you've told me that you have experience with. So let's say you say Um, you have experience with um, um, articulate storyline. Okay. That's like an instructional mm -hmm. design tool. And um, you put those terms in there. And so I go and I type those in and then I look to see where else in the document it shows up. And if the only place you've put it is in your keyword section, Mm -hmm. you've stated that you can do something and you've not backed up your claim at all. Got it. So your BS meter is kind of going off at yeah. that point. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes I would perfect say sense. that's that's a big one for um, like resume gotchas is people work on this whole keyword idea and then they stuff that section with keywords and it's just like busy and it's mishy mashy. It's like that drawer that everybody has in their house where they just shove stuff, <laughs> you know, it's that and you don't need we that on your resume. I, I may have more than one of those yeah, in wow. my house. Yes. <laughs> Okay. So please, everyone, yeah. don't put your junk drawer of stuffed keywords and yeah. things that you like maybe opened for five minutes. Um, don't if, if you don't know how to program in SQL, definitely don't put that in there because yeah. someone like Aaron knows what they're doing and is going to be able to quickly go through there or one of her colleagues and go like, uh, I'm not seeing this backed up anywhere as far as a project you did where this was a deliverable having to use this skill or this software, or this technology. Yeah. So- Great. With that, you know what? That's great. Don't have to obsess about putting in a bunch of those soft skills anymore. Just don't do it. No, they're not looking at it anyway. No. Um, so if someone you know has has gone through and they've thought about packaging and maybe been a little more thoughtful about that, maybe taken some polls with some key people that they trust, candid feedback mm-hmm. from, and then have started to redo their resume, update their LinkedIn profile so that both of them are telling the same story. Now the person has had somebody reach out to them or from LinkedIn, or they've seen a role that they are now applying for. What usually, how do you prepare people or work with people in order to get them ready for the all important interview? Yeah. Um, what, what does that kind of look like? What do you recommend for people to get in the right mind space or head space for that? Because that can be often very nerve wracking, right? Oh, for sure, right? Because we most of us don't spend our day to day interviewing. I mean, you do for what you're doing here, <laughs> which is why you're so good at it. But it's because you're getting a lot of practice, right? You've done a lot of reps. Yes. And so I would say the same is true for an interviewer. The number one thing is that no one is born a great interviewer. It, it's people who practice a lot. And mm. by a lot, I mean like, borderline obsessively right at the beginning, because it's like, you have to, you have to get those muscles retrained and you have to kind of get back in the gym of interviewing, if you will. Oh, I love this analogy. This is great. Yeah. You got to put in the reps. Yeah. And I mean, imagine going through, right. Yeah. And when I'm working with people and we're coming up with their story, whether it's a sales story or hero's journey story, whatever they're working on, and they have to communicate at an event or do a keynote or something like it doesn't count to just do it in your head. Right. You have to do it out loud. Yeah. That body mind connection. Like I would, I would recommend even like, I don't know. Have you even told people like you have to like turn on your camera and pretend you're at the interview? Oh yeah. And go Record through these questions. Yourself, for sure. So many, cause nobody does that, but I bet it would be so useful to get out all of those nerves and to like get those neuro pathways connected. Yeah. So it doesn't seem so hard. And you need a few like practice rounds, right? You need yeah. something. Imagine you apply to your dream company and you get an interview and you haven't been practicing. And so you're kind it's of a little one. rusty and it's like your first day back mm. at the gym where you're like, yeah, what do I do here again? And like, is this all going to go <laughs> I've okay? I've never seen that machine. Yeah. I'm scared to sit in it. I don't know how it and works. And even if you do it, you're like <laughs> not that strong and you're going to be super sore the next day. And like, mm-hmm. it's just like, you're not ready. Right. So I, I think that for the best advice I could give is that there are some things that you can pre-practice right now today, because you know, you're going to get asked these questions. Mm -hmm. So things like, tell me about yourself or some version of that. What Mm -hmm. are you really, I mean, I will tell you, tell me about yourself 
sets the stage for the rest of the interview for the interviewer and E um, in that most people don't know how to talk through that in a succinct way with a purpose mm. behind it. How do you tell the story of you as it relates to the job that you're trying to get? It's different than the story of you. And you're yeah, going to point out. And so, so true. go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just gonna oh. say that's so true. I never really thought about it that way. Yeah. It, it, um, it's something that takes refinement. And that's where, again, going back to my whole, like, you should still write a resume you should write out your responses, not because you're going to read them, but because you start to build and retrain your brain on what those words are that you might want to say. And then you can read them back. And then you'd be like, no, I don't like that. Or I want to change this. It's editable and it's accountable. And so recording that. yourself, writing it down, practicing on family members, those can all be great things. I'm a massive fan of an interview coach because your coach is going to, there to help you be successful. They're not there to make sure they don't hurt your feelings. They're going to be respectful, <laughs> but you, sometimes you need somebody to say, that's not working. Like you can't do that. Yeah. Whereas your family member might be like, no, that was really good. You know? And then yes. you've got a false kind of indication of the fact that you're ready when really, you know, somebody like me who interviews all the time, I would say, oh, no, 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 that's not going to work. And here, let me tell you why it's not going to work and how we need to reposition this. And I'm going to give you homework to go back and rethink now with this piece of coaching. So I do that a lot with my clients as we practice and then we create homework where I say, go back and rewatch the video of yourself. Talk about torture. And I never, and, I never thought about it that way, but that's such a good point. And how... How much of an amazing investment is that that pays yeah. off right away? Like if you oh. spent some money up front or conversely, even if you just did the version where it's you yourself in a locked room with the questions that you are going through out loud and you practice yeah. it several times before you get in front of them, like that, that is making it so that you can get to the point where you're going to be able to have the job interview and maybe get it or not get it just depending on the fact that you ran it several times and the other candidates didn't. Mm -hmm. Preparedness. Like that's the most amazing 30 minutes you could have spent or, or a couple of hours with a coach like you. Yeah. Preparedness so is a differentiator for sure. And it's completely, mm -hmm. the best part is it's totally in your control. Like what a better piece of news than like, hey, you can totally affect this and it's totally in your control. You just have to go do it. Yeah. You just have to do the reps. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, w now that we've we've kind of hit on the like, you need to spend some time yeah. focusing that energy in one direction. Yeah. Maybe gathering some information first to make sure before you just start spraying out your resume everywhere. Fine tune your resume first. Make sure your LinkedIn profile is telling the same story. It doesn't have to be overly well designed. Mm -hmm. Like Aaron was saying, we're going to make sure that template is in there so that it's easy for the audience, the person you're submitting it to, make their job easier so that it's easier for them to contact you. Interviewing and mindset, we've touched on that a little bit. Is there anything else that you would wanna tell people um, before we wrap up for today that they might wanna be thinking about? Yeah, um, and this goes back to sales too, is in sales, okay, if you're not dialing, you're not filling your pipeline. And if you don't mm -hmm. keep your pipeline full, you're gonna run out of opportunities. And you need to think of your job search like a funnel. Um, there is a mix of strategy where some people, you know, will say, oh, you just need to network your way to a job. Or some people will say, I just mass applied like crazy and got a job. All those things are true. I tend to like a hybrid of both. But the, the common denominator between them is that you need to keep the top of your funnel full by doing consistent inputs. And this is a multi-month long process for most people. So really becoming intentional about what does that schedule look like for you? What are your expectations for you? If Again, if you work with a coach, typically that's something a coach will help you set of saying, you know, how do you want to show up every week so that you're accountable, but you're also not sort of emotionally judging yourself based on your external yeah. results. Like, is this enough this week or am I doing okay? You're keeping that funnel full. You're showing up week after week. You're doing your inputs. You're kind of checking for feedback. And I see a lot of people start and stop and start and stop. And that, that loss of momentum really does have an impact. Most importantly, it probably has a mental impact because, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're not seeing the results and it feels like you've been working on this job search for months and months and months. 
even though it's been kind of starty stoppy. And uh, that then can feel very discouraging for a lot of candidates. When so that consistency of like, yeah. maybe, you know, if you're working with a coach, that's great as well. But even just for yourself, if you're like, hey, I'm, I'm sending out this many inquiries per week. Yep. That way I feel like I'm staying on top of it. I'm trying to fill that funnel, like you said, that pipeline. Yeah. Something else that I, I would would say as well is, and I had someone, another guest on a couple of weeks ago that talked to this and they were talking about the fact of, you know, something that we should all know that we should be doing and some, something that I've noticed the most successful people that just seem to never be out of a job. They're always on to the next thing. Mm. Someone's seeking them out. They are never in this kind of like dropped situation. Those are the people that, that take the advice that you just gave and don't just do it when they need a job right now. They're having conversations purposefully, authentic ones, constantly yeah. with other people and asking other people at different companies how they're doing and kind of doing that networking on a more regular basis. So that's something I know I'm trying to be more conscientious about in my business and in my relationships, um, not just when you need it, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I need someone to help me right now, but like, how can you help mm -hmm. other people right now? But how can you also just be having conversations constantly? Yeah, I, I think that's fantastic advice is you never you never stop networking. And I, I think sometimes it feels like networking feels like this very transactional thing. Like I'm going to go talk yeah. to people so they'll know me. Mm -hmm. And really, it's just it's little things like when someone who you work with moves to a new company, put a reminder on your calendar to stay in touch with them once a quarter and just, you know, hey, how are you doing or how are the kids or, you know, it doesn't have to be this grand gesture. It's just staying in touch with the people who you know and who you've interacted with in your life. And, you know, maybe it is getting out there on LinkedIn and meeting new people or having, you know, having things like this where, you know, you and I get to spend some time together and, yeah. you know, you build friendships that way. And when something comes up or you're looking or you have an idea or you're not sure what to do, you've got this network of people who you can call upon, you know? And so that I think so spot on that it, networking is just, you know, interacting with the humans around you and don't ever stop doing that. There's never not yeah. a value to that see who you can help right now. And yeah. it's amazing, like not with the intention of getting something back, but just to do it. It's amazing how it just happens for you anyway, when you yeah. need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So true. So if people want to work with you, which I'm guessing a lot of the people that are listening to this right now are like, oh my gosh, please, Aaron, tell us how to work with Aaron. The other Aaron, yeah. the one that's spelled E-R-I-N. She's the one that <laughs> so we want to talk to, not the double A Aaron. <laughs> How can they do that? What's the best way to work with you? How can they learn more? Yeah. So my website, super duper easy. It's just my name, Erin Luber, E-R-I-N-L-E-W-B, like boy, E-R.com. Um, my website has my offerings on there as far as how we can work together. You can get in touch with me, send me a message. I do have a couple of different courses that I offer in addition to my one-to-one nice. -one coaching so um, I like those because those are really approachable for most people, even if you're on a bit of a budget right now. And um, I don't know, I, I would love to share too, like my resume blueprint course is I think a great place oh. to start for people. If nice. you're if you're at that point where it's like, you know what you want to do, but you're not sure how to sell you, then mm -hmm. my resume blueprint course is the best place to start. It's $99. And um, I, I'll offer a coupon code, I guess on here, we could probably put that in the show notes too, but, um, oh yes, please. Yeah. Storied 10 and save Story yourself 10. $10. All right. Cause who doesn't wow. love, you know, what? I think $10. you're the first, I think you're the first person that's offered the audience a coupon code. So like you just, you just started I mean, that. That's a thing now. I, I felt like that'd be fun. <laughs> so hopefully another Aaron. Yeah. An Aaron adding value. That's fantastic. Yeah. So we'll make sure that that link is in the show notes as well for anyone that takes advantage of that. Amazing. That sounds awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for spending time with us today. I know this is going to be so helpful to so many different people. I already am like, you know, I, it's, I'm going to blow the dust <laughs> off of my, my <laughs> Word document resume and delete that entire section that had all this, the, the never, keyword yeah. skills in it. Never happened, right? It was never there. <laughs> was never there. <laughs> <Of course>. <laughs> <laughs> Have a fantastic week and thank you so, so much. Thank you for having me, Aaron. This was great.